Hi, my name is Sarah Thurman. I'm a rising sophomore animal and dairy sciences major. This summer, I've been fortunate enough to be selected to be an intern doing equine research with Dr. Bowser and Dr. Swiderski in the Mississippi State College of Veterinary Medicine. Our research centers around Sparrow, or summer pasture-associated recurring airway obstruction. This disease affects horses primarily in the southeastern United States and presents itself through asthma-like symptoms. The goal of our research is to learn more about the disease and to develop viable treatment and prevention options for horse owners. The majority of my responsibilities this summer have involved preparing for, assisting in, and cleaning up a variety of procedures we use to collect data. Here's an example of what we would set up for a pulmonary function test and a bronchoalveolar lavage. By setting things up every morning before a procedure, we ensure that once the procedure has begun, it will be able to go smoothly no matter the circumstances. One of the tests we complete on our horses is pulmonary function testing, or PFTs. PFTs involve putting an airtight mask over the horse's muzzle and using a pressure sensor to measure the amount of pressure being exerted by the horse's lungs when breathing. The PFD can be done sedated or unsedated depending on what would be safer for both us and the horse. I was also able to observe several standing lung biopsies. We complete lung biopsies on our horses in order to form a database of sorts so that we can compare tissues from affected horses' lungs to that of non-affected horses. During a lung biopsy, a very small amount of lung tissue is removed in order to prevent injury to the lung. These live tissues are then preserved so that we can continue to do tests on them in the future. We complete bronchoalveolar lavages on our horses so that we can see what sorts of allergens and particles are in their airways. A BAL involves putting a nasogastric tube into the horse's lungs. We use a scope to push in saline, then flush it out in order to collect the liquid, which is then observed and tested so that we can get closer to discovering what causes these horses to have such difficulty breathing. Precision cut lung slicing involves inflating harvested lung tissue with warm agarose. Agarose allows lung tissue to be more stable when it's being sliced later on. The lung is then dissected to isolate airways. The airways are encased in agarose and placed into a tissue slicer. The tissue slicer slices small disks of tissue at approximately 275 microns thick. The slices are preserved and used to test drugs and for future research. They can be cryofrozen and kept for an indefinite amount of time. A portion of Team Sparrow's job is to condition horses. Our project runs off of donated horses, and when horses are donated, they're not always docile or able to be safely handled. It's also very important for us to ensure that the horses have a good quality of life. They're handled, brushed, checked on, and given love constantly by our team. As an ADS intern, much of my responsibility came from scoring horses. Scoring involves observing their nostrils in order to grade their medial and lateral <laughs> nostril flare, grading their abdominal lift, and recording their respiratory rate. This lets our team be able to determine, determine when horses are flaring, or having difficulty breathing as a result of their sparrow. I usually don't. When horses are not able to breathe properly, we either move them inside the clinic or to outdoor stalls to ensure they have a better quality of life. And we also nebulize them and give them other forms of medication to ease their breathing. Here you can see Max. He's one of our sparrow affected horses. You can see that his medial nostrils are flaring very high and they're not returning to normal. In addition, you can see how rapidly he's breathing. He's having to put a lot of effort into each breath, as you can see by the tone in his stomach. And he's breathing so hard, it almost seems like his whole body's moving. This is a red flag for us. Max was moved inside and given medication. Here's Smokey. You can't hear it in the video, but Smokey's also wheezing. He's exhibiting a sharp, sharp noise when he breathes in and out. 
You can also see how rapid his respiratory rate is. He's breathing really fast. He's also putting a lot of effort into it. You can see his ribs showing as he presses his abdomen to try to get a breath in. Through working with Team Sparrow, I learned so much about the equine world and about equine medicine in particular. I was able to learn a ton of tricks of the trade. I learned a lot about even equine anatomy and just simple things about how to handle a horse and even client care. I also was able to use my major a ton. I was able to use a lot of my chemistry classes in order to do calculations in the research lab and things like that. In addition, I was able to use a lot of things I learned from Dr. Rude's animal science class, such as how to age a horse based on its teeth. I learned a lot about how to, use, how to look at horses' feet and things like that to tell if they're normal or abnormal, which came to be very helpful when I was scoring and doing things like that because I could notice if a horse had an abnormality. Overall, I loved my internship, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who made this possible. I had the best time of my life. I'd like to give a special thank you to Dr. Bowser, Dr. Swiderski, Audrey Tucker, Liz Moyer, Heather Dodd, Margaret McKibben, and the Mississippi State Animal and Dairy Sciences Department, as well as the College of Veterinary Medicine, for helping me through this internship and providing me with this awesome opportunity.